this is for Chem 2045, and we're going to be doing practice problem one from the exam for fall 2009, and this is for exam three. Um, practice problem one says, predict the hybridization of the central atom in each of the following molecules, and they give us four molecules to work with. So the first thing we'll do is write down what we know, which is the molecular formulas. So we have H2, C, 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 which is carbon, and another H2. Uh, we also have iodium fluoride, which has four fluorines on it, and this one has a negative charge. The next one is iodium fluoride with a positive charge, and then the last one will be CH2 and then oxygen. So now that we've written down what we know, um, we're going to look at the, what the problem asks for, and it says to predict the hybridization of the central atom. So to predict hybridization, we need to know the structure of the molecule. So right now, we're going to start with the first one here. Um, to draw out this molecule, we want to identify the central atom. Right here, we'll say the central atom is carbon. We won't say this one because this one's off to the side, and same with this carbon. So our central atom right here is this carbon. So to draw this, we'll have carbon carbon off to the side, and then two hydrogens attached to each carbon off to the side here. Now to completely draw this, we need to know how many valence electrons we have to work with. So we're going to count that right now. Um, each of the carbons will give us four valence electrons. So for three of those, and then we have four hydrogens each donating one valence electron. So four times one. Turn that around. One electron, four atoms. So this comes out to 16 electrons. We have 16 electrons to put on our molecule here. We have used uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 in our skeleton. So we've used 12, that means we have four more left over. Since hydrogen is satisfied right now with its two electrons on each of them, um, we're going to point towards the carbon, so we could add um, electrons here, but then we want to focus on this carbon here in the middle. It needs to have its octet satisfied. So we could add a double bond here, that's using two, and a double bond here. And now if we observe, we have completed the octet on our carbons, and our hydrogens are satisfied. So looking at our molecule, we see that we have a um, planar orientation. So this is our central atom that we're focusing on. And we see that it has two groups off to the side. So with the two groups attached to carbon, that means we're going to need two hybridized orbitals. So we know from this that we'll have an sp hybridization. And we get this because we've used one s orbital of that carbon, and we also used one p orbital. And those combine together to make a hybridized sp orbitals that we attach to the carbons off the side here. So this one is sp hybridized. Now I'm about to erase this one so we can do the next one. So if you want to copy anything down. So we know this one's sp hybridized. Now we're going to look at this atom right here, or this molecule. It's iodium fluoride with a negative charge. So we're still predicting hybridization, so we need to know the shape of this molecule. So let's do the shape. We have, we're looking at this, um, this molecule, and we see that uh, iodine is going to be the central atom because it's few, the fewer atoms in this molecule. So we'll put down iodine, and then have fluorine off to the side here. and we're going to make some bonds, so we have our skeleton. Um, but we need to figure out how many valence electrons we have to work with here. So let's count them up. We know iodine will give us seven valence electrons to work with, plus um, four fluorines, and they also give seven electrons, valence electrons. And then we also need to account for this negative charge right here. So one more electron, and that's going to give us 36 electrons to work with. 36 valence electrons. So we're going to account for those here. We have 2, 4, 6, 8 electrons. Uh, we still have a lot to work with, 
So the easiest thing to do here is to complete the octet of all the fluorines. So we need to add, um, they each have two, so we need to add six more. So uh, two, four, six, two, four, six, two, four, six. All right, now all of our fluorines are happy. Um, now we need to count and see how many we used. We have one, two, three, four fluorines. Four times eight, we've used 32. Wow, so that means we have four more electrons to use up. So you might ask, well, where, where are we going to put those? You'd say that iodine is already satisfied with this octet. Instead, iodine is not following the rule here. He's being on the outside. So we, we can add electrons to iodine, and he'll have more groups around the outside. So we'll add an electron pair here, and an electron pair here. So that means we have one, two, three, four, five, six groups attached to iodine. So six groups means that we're going to have six orbitals to account for. So these six orbitals are going to come from iodine. Um, if you've memorized each hybridization, you'll know that six um, means you'll have to use sp3, d2. And we found this out by knowing that we took one s orbital, three, oops, don't write that, three p orbitals, and then, because we only have four right now, we need six, so we need two more. Where are we going to grab that? We're going to find them in, we're going to find iodine's d orbitals. So now we're going to have to use two of iodine's d orbitals. So let's make sure we did that right. 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 2 is 6, so we've got six orbitals that we can combine together and make a hybridization, and each of those is going to be hybridized into sp32. So now that we've done this negative um, iodium fluoride, let's move on to this positive one here. So this one was sp3d2 hybridized. Now let's start again. We'll have iodine as the central atom connected to four fluorines. Um, so we need to count how many valence electrons we have here. It's a little bit different from the one before. So we have seven from iodine plus four times seven from fluorine. And then because this is a positive charge here, we have to subtract an electron, minus one. So now we have 34 electrons to work with. So we're going to put that, those on here. Let's do, let's complete our octets on the fluorine again. Two, four, six. So now we have eight, we have 32 electrons accounted for. It means we've got two more. What are we going to do with those? We can stick them off to the side over here. You might ask, why don't we make a double bond right here? Use those electrons right there. Iodine doesn't have an octet, but uh, when we look at fluorine right here, we can make fluorine have an octet. So the preferred method is to put the two electrons on iodine. So it's the only one that's not following the octet rule. So now that we have this extra set of uh, electrons right here, we're going to count our groups. So we have one, two, three, four, five groups on iodine. So five groups means we're going to have to have five orbitals. So we're going to take five orbitals from iodine, and we're going to use a, we're going to use one s orbital, three, oh, did it again, three p orbitals, and then just one d orbital. We don't need two this time, just one. So we have one plus three plus one, that's five orbitals. Mix those together, we're going to have an sp3d hybridization. So this one is sp3d hybridized. Okay, so now we can move on to the last one. This one might be tricky because it's uh, an unfamiliar molecule. It's an organic molecule that you're going to learn about probably in organic chemistry. Um, right here, you might ask, what will be the central atom? Um, usually, 
we will predict carbon to be the central atom. That's what we've been told in class to use. So we won't use oxygen. So drawing this out, carbon is our central atom. We're going to attach a hydrogen, one more hydrogen, and an oxygen. So we need to figure out how many valence electrons we have to work with to find out our molecular shape. Um, we have four from carbon plus two from hydrogens, two hydrogens each donating one, and then one oxygen which will have seven electrons. So that's going to be 12 electrons. So we're going to put these on our molecule. We have two, four, six accounted for. Um, hydrogen and satisfied, we'll ignore those. Let's just put them on oxygen. So we've used our other six electrons in oxygen, but we see that carbon is not satisfied, so we'll take off two off oxygen right here, and make a double bond between carbon and oxygen. Now everybody is satisfied. So looking at this molecule, we have three groups attached to carbon. That means we have a trigonal planar orientation. I'm going to write that down. Trigonal planar, which means carbon's got three groups attached to it. Three groups means we're going to have three orbitals that will need to be hybridized. So we're going to take one s orbital and two, two p orbitals. And combine those together, we'll have sp2 hybridization. So each of these orbitals attaching to the groups is going to be sp2 hybridized. Then that's our last molecule. Let's write that down. Sp2. So this will be our answer, which is E. Answer choice E.